Okay, analyzing graphs of polynomial functions. Uh, we're going to graph some polynomials, but this time we're going to use technology. And um, now that we've got our iPads, we'll use Desmos a lot in here. But we'll talk about uh, the graphs, identifying intercepts, maximums, and minimums. Now, we've talked about a max or min on parabolas. Like, for example, if I've got a parabola that opens up, I've got a minimum on the bottom. If I've got a parabola that opens down, I've got a maximum on top. It's the same idea, but sometimes we can have on different polygons, different hills and valleys. And every time you get a hill, you have what's called a local max. So it's a max in a certain part of the graph. To kind of put that in like layman's terms the parabola only has one max because there's only one um sorry uh hill whereas we get a quartic or a cubic or anything like that that it has some crazy little turns to it it can have multiple maximums okay same idea it's a minimum that is in a certain part of the graph so again we got our tips for graphing we could find the x-intercepts y-intercepts like i said we're probably gonna do a lot of this with technology uh, you have the end behavior of that graph, and you've got the turning points. Okay, so here we go. Um, if I wanted to identify the x-intercepts, uh, I'm just going to look at the graph and look at the x-intercepts. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Um, if I want the local max, that is going to be the top part. And I'm only interested in the y value, so if I look at my graph, one of my local max is at three. Another local max, and I'm just guessing here. Um, I'm thinking that's like 1.6. Um, those are my only two hills, so those are my only two local max. I've got my local minimums. So at that valley, it looks like it's y is equal to a negative 1.5, maybe. Again, I'm only interested in the y values. Uh, and then I got another one down here, so I look over and it looks like y is equal to a negative 3. Okay, um, again, my x-intercepts, you can look at those, but the ordered pair looks like it's at negative 2, 0. Uh, I got another one at negative 1, 0. I got one at 0, 0. I've got one at maybe 1.1, 1. 1, comma, um, 0. And I've got one at maybe 2, 0. Okay, that's just looking off the graph and finding those two spots. Now, I've got 1, 2, 3, four turns so remember the number of turns is the degree minus one so if the number of turns was four solve this equation n is equal to five i've got myself a fifth degree which i mean makes sense because i've got five roots but just because it's a fifth degree polynomial doesn't necessarily mean that all five roots are on that graph for instance, over here, again, um, I'm going to look at my local max, the top of the hill, the y value, again, it's going by 2, so it's going to be y is equal to 4, uh, local min, and that local min looks like it's um, maybe a little bit underneath 2, so y is equal to 1.9. I've got one turn and two turns. So, again, number of turns, 2 is equal to n minus 1. This guy here is the third power. But if I'm looking at the x-intercepts, there's only one at negative 2, 0. I'm sorry, negative 4, because we're going by 2s again. And what we did earlier, right, we got our solutions. One of them is a real solution. That means that the other two are imaginaries. And they wouldn't necessarily show up on your graph. So you can't say, oh, well, it crosses here at one spot. You need to look for those ma maximum possible turns. So here we got a cubic third power. Over here we got that's something to the fifth degree. I should say power degree. Same thing. Okay, again, here I use a graphing calculator. Um, I know that we're not always going to use a graphing calculator. We're going to use Desmos. But go ahead and you'll type that bad boy in there. And this is the resulting graph I got in a graphing calculator. What I do like about Desmos is that you can zoom in and actually click on the actual dot. And it will give you a very 
good X intercept right there. Um, so you get all those three. Um, you, it will also, I think if you click on the top and the bottom there, it will get you your local max and local min. And because it's got two turns, one turn and two turn, again, two turns, it is a third degree. Or I guess I could just call it a cubic. And this cubic actually does cross at all three spots on the x-axis. So there you go. That's using your technology to analyze a graph. Nothing more, nothing more.